Hello and welcome to the 11th part of the Introduction to Haskell course. In this part, we'll talk about applicative functors, which are also called just applicatives. Applicative functors or applicatives are also a type class, much like functors that we learned about in the previous video. But unlike functors that generalize the idea of function mapping, applicatives generalize the idea of function application. More specifically, they allow us to apply pure functions to effectful arguments. So effectful arguments such as the maybe type or the list type or IO type, some, any type that has some effect to it rather than being a basic uh, Haskell value. So we can ask ourselves, the question how to add two maybe values together using the plus operator so we know that the plus operator works on uh, numeric types uh, types that belong to the uh, num type class so what about the maybe types how can we use plus on a maybe type okay one option we have that we already know how to do we can write a specific function for the maybe type to use this function, right? And then we take uh, two maybe ints, for example, it could be a num. And uh, in the case where we have uh, two values, just x and just y, we unwrap them, unwrap x and y, add them together, and then wrap them back in the just constructor, right? And uh, if we have anything else, then we know one of these is a nothing. So in that case, we just want to propagate the nothing because we can't really add a value and a nothing. And uh, this works fine, right? We see maybe add just five, just three, we get back just eight, and this is fine. But of course, we don't want to write a, a function for each type we want to use the plus operator on. Right, so that's where applicative functors come in to generalize this function application. Besides that, we also need to think about every other operator or function that we want to work with, right? So if we replace the plus operator with the multiplication one here, then again, we have to write a function for every type to use this operator. So obviously there is a thing to abstract here or generalize and that's simply the idea of function application which this applicative functor class does here we have the definition of the type class the class keyword and then we have a, a type constraint of functor f for any applicative f so any f that we are making an instance of the applicative type class must also be a functor first and the applicative type class has two main functions, pure and this uh, less than star greater than operator, which I'll call applicative function application. Pure is a function, it's a simple function that takes in a value A and simply wraps it in the applicative um, F data constructor, the, the types data constructor. So we get F of A as a result and the applicative function application the type signature is very similar to that of fmap if you ignore this first f uh, for a second you have a function from a to b you have an f of a's and you get uh, f of b as a result so this type signature is the same as um, the fmap of the functor type class the difference is here that the function being applied itself is wrapped into the functor type. So we'll see that this is exactly what allows us to use uh, currying and to apply this function um, to, um, to effect for arguments, but also uh, not to apply just a function that takes in one argument. But uh, because we can use currying with this, we can uh, apply functions that take in uh, an, any number of arguments. And we'll see that in examples with um, different types. Let's start looking at some data types that are applicatives. So the maybe type is an applicative in Haskell by default, the same as it's a functor by default as well. 
and we already know that the effect of the maybe type is the possibility of failure which is represented by the nothing data constructor so if we want to make a type such as maybe an instance of the applicative type class we write as usual instance applicative maybe and then we need to define the functions pure and the uh, applicative function application operator so in the case of maybe pure is uh, simply the wrapper just right so we give it a value for example pure uh, one and we get back just one okay uh, the pure is the simple function that simply wraps a value into into this type and uh, the uh, applicative function application operator we know that it receives a function f wrapped in the uh, maybe data constructor so just and then to apply it to adjust x we still do uh, a pretty simple thing we just take the function apply it to x and wrap the result in back into the just uh, into the just data constructor anything else we give back nothing because uh, in, in that case either this one or this one is nothing and if we apply nothing to something we just want to propagate the nothing so now let's take a closer look at how uh, applicative function application works with the maybe type let's say we want to add two maybe types together using the plus operator okay so we know that the uh, this operator takes in a function that's wrapped into uh, the types uh, data constructor so we apply the function pure to the function plus to get back uh, this function plus wrapped into the just constructor right so we get just plus or just a function from a to a to a where a is a num and then we apply this function to just five and to just three all right so our function takes in two arguments we apply it to two arguments let's see step by step how it works so first we apply this pure function to plus and we can ask for what is the type of this uh, the result of this pure applied to plus and uh, what we get back from GHCI is that, uh, okay, some constraints first. So applicative F, so F in this line stands for applicative type class. A is a num, so any A in this uh, line uh, represents the num type, type class. And we get back F, a function wrapped in F, and the function is A to A to A, where A is a num right so this function takes in two arguments and it's wrapped into the applicative um, uh, constructor now it doesn't say it's wrapped in the maybe constructor and of course this makes sense because right now we just applied pure to plus and uh, it's just a general applicative f for now but uh, in the next step let's see what happens uh, in the next step we take another argument so let's see what is the type of this pure uh, applied to the function plus and then using the uh, applicative function application operator on just five let's see what the type is now so we started with a uh, function a to a to a wrapped in the applicative f and now if we apply just five now the only type uh, the only class constraint or uh, type variable a is uh, constrained by the num type class uh, there is no more applicative f constraint because now we know we are dealing with the maybe type so our function now is wrapped um, is uh, is shown as the maybe type and it wraps the function from a to a now why is the function from a to a of course because we applied one argument just five so yeah, we applied this argument and what we are left with is th this other part of the function right so this is currying partial application 
uh, which is uh, what I was saying. So um, this uh, type of applicative style of function application allows us to use currying on effectful arguments which means we can uh, use functions that take in any number of arguments and still use them normally. Uh, okay, the comments here explain uh, what happens, what I uh, just said. Basically, it returns a curried function wrapped in the maybe constructor or in the maybe type, better to say. Uh, and okay, let's look at the last step. So we have the type of pure plus applied to just five and now also applied to just three. So that type is then simply constrained by uh, type variable B, which is constrained by the num type class, and the result is maybe B. Of course, there is no function anymore because uh, we applied this last argument and all we have is this result. Uh, in this case, it's shown as B for some reason, doesn't really matter. It's just a type variable. Okay, so hopefully that sort of breaks down how applicative function application works with this syntax of uh, wrapping the function into the into the applicative type with pure and then applying it to to applicative types we said that the underlying effect of the maybe type is the possibility of failure and so far we have kind of been uh, explicitly uh, handling how this effect works right if we get a nothing then we return nothing propagate the nothing and so on now because we applied it uh, we defined it in the applicative type class in the applicative function application operator we defined what this effect means when applying a function with this maybe type when we use this uh, applicative style of uh, function application we don't need to handle the underlying effect anymore, right? Because we say pure plus and we just apply our maybe types. This one is just five. This one is nothing. And we get back nothing, right? So the applicative machinery now takes uh, care of the underlying effect for us, which is a nice bonus. Now let's take a look at the list type. Uh, in Haskell, we say the effect of list uh, is the possibility of non-deterministic results. So non-deterministic here might be a bit confusing because it sounds like for the same input, you might get a different output on different executions. But this is against what Haskell is about and it, this is not what it means. Uh, so non-deterministic here uh, simply means that lists can have zero elements or they can have any number of elements or even infinite lists exist in Haskell, right? So when we are applying things on lists, we have uh, multiple ways of um, uh, multiple possible results, basically. And that's, that's uh, what non-deterministic means, right? If we, uh, we'll take a look at a, an example below to to explain what it means a bit more but uh, for now just don't confuse non-deterministic with being uh with meaning something like for the same input we get different output on different executions no in haskell same input always means the same output unless there is of course side effects with io uh, so let's take a look at the instance declaration for the list type for applicatives and we have the uh, implementation for the pure function. Pure x is simply the x value wrapped in a list. And for the applicative uh, function application, we have fs on the left side, which is uh, so a function type wrapped in a list, so a list of functions. And the second argument is xs, which is uh, simply some value uh, for for the given functions functions it could be uh, we can define this um, uh, operator with list comprehensions so that uh, f x uh, so the the new list uh, as a result of this function application will be f x where so f applied to x where f comes from the list of fs and x comes from 
in the list of xs so from list comprehensions we know that uh, we have two lists here and that means that for the first lists it's going is going to be uh, iterated through each element of the second list right uh, so let's let's look at the example here but basically it means every possible combination will be applied the example here is uh, like before we have pure uh, applied to the plus operator to wrap this function in the list so we have uh, basically the result is a, a list of a function plus and then we apply it to the first argument one and two and the second argument three and four so we are applying this function plus on uh, every, uh, with every possible combination of these two lists so one will be applied to three then one to four two to three two to four and so the that's where the non-determinism comes in right because we apply this function plus to these two lists so we could apply it as one plus three one plus four two plus three two plus four that's that's what the non-determinism means but the final result will always be the same right for the same list for this list one and two and three and four the final result will always be four five five six because the combinations we have is one plus three one plus four two plus three and two plus four and of course the first argument to the uh, applicative function application operator is a list of functions so as long as the functions have the same type the same type signature uh, they can be grouped together in a list right we know that lists are always composed of the elements of the same type so a uh, plus 10 function is a type from a to a where a is a num a uh, uh, times 10 function is also a function of a to a um, uh, on the power of 2 is also a function from a to a so all of these three functions can be in the same list because they are of the same type and uh, when we apply a list of functions to another list then like before we get every possible combination applied so first plus 10 is applied to 1 then to 2 then to 3 right then times 10 is applied to 1 2 3 and so on every possible combination that's why we see in the result 11 12 13 10 20 30 and then the result of power to 2 1 4 and 9 we move on to the io applicative and we know that the effect of io types is the ability to perform input output actions so dealing with the impure world with interactions with other systems and uh, so in the applicative uh, form the io type is an instance of the applicative type class where pure is return uh, and basically return in io is simply just wrap a value into uh, the io type and uh, we have a uh, applicative style application to b uh, we can do much like in functors we can have the do block and we can perform the action a because we know a is a type of io function so when we perform this io action what is returned is a, a function so we can perform this action a to get the function f also the same goes for b b is a type of io and then some type uh, it could be for example io int so we need to perform the action b to get this uh, underlying uh, not underlying but to get the value x uh, in in this case that i mentioned it would be int and then we have these two uh, things f and x and we can simply return the f applied to x so with return wrapped into the io constructor so as with other types with io uh, types we can use um, applicative style of function application here we have pure plus plus so string concatenation apply to an action get line and another action get line so this will uh, perform uh, the first the pure plus plus in the do block it will be perform this action which is uh, 
there's no action really just get the plus plus function then perform the second uh the the second action get line to get back a string value perform another get line to get back another string value and then finally we can apply the function in full to uh to get the result so if we up uh, run this function read two and we enter for the first get line applicative and for the second one applicative uh for the second one functors then the concatenation is the result that we get back and it's applicative functors as a string so because with applicative uh, application style uh, we can apply a function to any number of arguments right because we can take advantage of currying it becomes easy to for example uh, create a function that um, reads a certain number of lines and that performs a function on, on all of them together right so here we have get lines and in the case where get line zero then we return simply an empty list uh, signifying an empty string i could have put uh, an empty string here it might have been better but um, it's fine since uh, strings are lists of chars uh, so and then the recursive case is get lines n we have some n and we uh, apply the pure plus plus function to one get line and applied to get lines of n minus one so until we reach this case of return an empty string we will be running get lines and if we call it with the argument five then we will ask for five get lines before we return a result so if, if we enter on each one one two three four five we get back the concatenation of five get lines right so through currying we can uh, apply uh, pure functions to effectful arguments um, functions that take in any number of arguments finally we need to take a look at the applicative laws same as with functors applicatives have to satisfy some laws for uh, for their instances to be uh, valid and we have four laws with applicatives the first one is the identity law which is much the same as uh, the functor uh, functor law so if we have the id function and we apply it in applicative style uh, to the value v then the result is the value v and nothing changes so the id function works in applicative style uh, as it should as well uh, the second one is homomorphism which uh, states that uh, normal function application is preserved uh, meaning that if we apply a pure function to some effectful argument x uh, in applicative style then that would be the same as wrapping the result uh, of uh, just normal function application f of x into pure uh, so so that makes sense right because if we unpack this if we just take the pure value of f and uh, and x and we apply them and wrap them in the data constructor it's exactly what we should get if we apply uh, the pure function to to the same uh, pure argument the interchange law is the third one which states that in the applicative style of application the order in which things are evaluated uh, should not matter so here we have some uh, pure uh, y which is a value and u is a function that works for this type so applying u to the pure y should be the same as applying a pure to and now we of course we cannot just apply y to u because uh, y is a value so we need to we need to create a function and we use this uh, function application operator the normal one to create a function that uh, now takes in an additional argument and applies it to you uh, so applies it to the function and uh, the result should be the same so the uh, order of uh, evaluating things with uh, applicative uh, function application should not matter and this is what the interchange law states 
The last one is composition, which is uh, much like in functor that function composition is preserved with the applicative style. So if we use a pure on the uh, function composition operator and we compose functions u and uh, v and then apply finally uh, apply the composed function to uh, the argument w the result should be the same as if we apply the function u to uh, to the function to the result of the uh, function v applied to w right so whether we compose the two functions first or uh, whether we just apply uh, one function and then the second function, the result should be the same. So function composition is preserved. That's the end of this presentational part on applicative functors or applicatives. We covered an introduction to the applicative type class, uh, its methods, and we looked at uh, some types in Haskell that are made into instances of the applicative type class by default. And now let's get into the practical session. In this session, we'll be practicing applicative functors and we'll do some exercises from this uh, university course. It's a homework for a university course from the University of Pennsylvania. It's a Haskell course. And uh, here's the link. If you want to check it out, you can. Here is first some introduction to the assignment. So we have a parser this uh, all of these exercises will be about uh, parsing some input so we have a type definition here for a parser and the parser for a value a of type a is a function which takes a string representing the input to be parsed and succeeds or fails if it succeeds it returns the parsed value along with the remainder of the input so our type definition is new type uh, parser uh, a it has a data constructor parser which has one field run parser which is a function that takes a string and returns a maybe a tuple of a and string so uh, maybe because it may fail or or it succeed and a is <clears throat> Uh, our uh, type, our uh, right, our value of type A that we are parsing, and string is the remainder of the uh, input if it succeeds. Okay, so here is an example for uh, a satisfy function which returns a parser char. Uh, this function takes a predicate on a char and construct the, a parser which succeeds only if it sees a char that satisfies the predicate which it then returns if it encounters a char that does not satisfy the predicate it fails okay so we have a function a predicate that given a char returns a boolean so evaluates to either, either true or false and given this function from char to bool it gives us a parser char so what does it do we have satisfy p p standing for predicate and the function just constructs the parser f right parser with, with f being the run parser function uh, where f uh, so we define f here f on an empty list uh, so an empty an empty string uh, is going to be nothing right there is no input so we fail and in the case of some input some string then we check the head of the list the first uh, char of the string check if x satisfies the predicate if so return x along with the remainder uh, of the input here yeah. so we can either have uh, px <clears throat> Uh, so if this evaluates to true, right? If uh, p apply to x, our predicate char to bool function apply to x, x being the char, uh, evaluates to true, then we return just x and the remainder, right? Just the um, parse for that char. And otherwise we return nothing. Any other case uh, we fail. Okay, so continuing on from that, we can uh, using satisfy we can define the parser 
uh, Char C, which expects to see exactly the char uh, char character C and fails otherwise. So <clears throat> uh, this is um, uh, this is now a function of uh, given a char, it returns a parser char. So <clears throat> char C is equal to just satisfy, right? Which takes in a function, a char to bool, and that function will be equal equal to C, right? So if our char C uh, equals the first element of the given input for the parser, then the parser will succeed and return that character along with the rest, right? So here we have some examples. We can run it for ourselves as well. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we have uh, run parser uh, satisfy is upper on abc uh, is upper is not in scope we have to import it okay uh, and reload it so run parser satisfy is upper abc so is upper is a function that returns whether a character is uppercase or or not and uh, so uh, because our satisfy is a char to bool right it takes in the first char a is it upper yes it is so uh, satisfied the predicate is satisfied and we successfully parse the a uh, being the x we return just a b c okay what if we run the other example so now the input is uh, lowercase all of it is lowercase but really the only the first character matters right and it is uh, lowercase so the is upper is not satisfied and the parser fails and returns nothing the last example here is using the char x so we expect to see exactly this uh, character x at the start of the string which we do so we successfully parse and the result is just x and yz being the the rest of the string okay that's the intro so we can see how this uh, parser type works here that uh, is predefined for us and now we can get into the actual exercises so the first exercise is uh, to implement a functor instance for parser and there's a hint you may find it useful to implement a function first which takes in a function x uh, then a tuple of ac and returns a tuple of bc so it means that it applies the function a to b to the first element of the tuple a and then the resulting tuple is uh, bc okay so let's define this function first right so our type signature is going to be the same as in the comment here so a function a tuple ac to a tuple of bc okay so this is a pretty simple function uh, right we we have uh, for the arguments we receive a function and the tuple uh, or we can pattern match and say the tuple will have elements a and b and then what we want to return is another tuple but with f applied to a and b as as nothing happened right so this is a function that applies a function to the first element of the tuple this uh, should be helpful for us when we define the functor instance as we know the parser type does work with uh, tuple types where a is our value and string is the remainder so we don't really care about the the second argument of the tuple <clears throat> um, anyway so to make a, an instance of a functor we need to think about what what uh, what f map means for this type of parser so we have a parser that if it succeeds we will get uh, a maybe type adjust uh, the parsed value and string so if we want to map uh, f map a function over that then what we are talking about is uh, run the parser right as it is and then 
apply the function to the parsed value right leave the reminder of the input as it is and just apply the function to the first element or the parsed value for the functor instance we write instance functor for our type parser where so we need we need to define fmap and fmap we know takes a function from a to b and in our case of parser a parser of type a and return the parser of type b right once the given function is mapped over this parser it will be of type b so fmap we for the arguments we receive a function of a to b and we receive a parser and we know that our parser type has this run parser function as its uh, argument right so uh we have parser and we can call this uh, run parser rp as the function and these are our two arguments what do we need to return we know we will return a parser as well and that this parser will have instead of the old rp function it will have um sort of rp combined with f in some way that we have to define so for now i'll just call this function g and we will define g in in the where clause here so where g g is a function as we know that is applied to a string and returns a maybe a to string sorry a maybe a string too um so g is applied to some string for now let's say just say xs um but what so what do we really want to do here xs is which string okay it's the string from the parser but um what we are actually doing with fmap we want to run the first parser right it's run parser function see what the result is and then once we get if we get nothing we will just propagate nothing okay that's the easy part but if we get uh, just some value and the rest of the string, then we want to apply our f function to to the to the value and return that. So we kind of want to say we want to nest our where clause. We want another where clause where we say there is some kind of a result that is. Um, that is the result of application of rp on xs first right so we have the result of applying this function and we know this is a maybe type and now we can define what we want to do with that result in our uh, final g function so i'll use guarded equations here and what i want to say here is like if result is equal equal to nothing then I'm gonna return nothing as well. But, uh, sorry, wrong. Uh, but, okay, the idea is telling me use is nothing, right? Because we can't really compare nothing. Um, I'm uh, not going to get into it now, but it's uh, much better to use, uh, I mean, if we say nothing equals equals nothing, it works but uh once we get a just uh, we, the possibility of just and so on it's not uh, it's not the best so we have this data maybe uh and there's this is nothing function which checks whether the variable is really nothing so we'll use this function is nothing result okay so if the result is nothing we return nothing in our fmapped function if our in our fmap uh, parser okay the other uh, possibility is that the result is uh, just and uh, so we can just say otherwise right because if it's uh, not nothing it's it's adjust and if it's uh, adjust something just a and string then uh, what do we want to do well okay we have the result 
and we uh, sort of want to apply the first f to it right because first is uh, a, a function that accepts a function to apply that function to the first element right we want to map to the first element because the rest of the string uh, we don't want to touch the rest of the input we only want to map the function on the parsed value so we want to say first uh, yeah apply this function f to the first element of res but that doesn't work why because the types don't match uh, okay so first is a function that takes a, a function a to b and takes a tuple ac and tuple is almost what we have ac here from res but not really we have a maybe tuple right so the type of maybe tuple and tuple is not the same and um this is what we covered in the last class with functors so maybe we know it's a functor itself so we can fmap a function over a maybe type with with fmap as well right so to apply this first f function to this maybe type we have to actually map it over uh, because I mean, you know, this could work if we wrote this function differently, if we wrote it explicitly for maybe types and uh, handled the just and the nothing case in here, then th that would be <clears throat> fine. But since we didn't, uh, we need to map it over to use it on, um, uh, on a maybe type. Okay, so now we don't have any more errors and this is the instance for the uh, functor instance for the parser so how could we test that our fmap works uh well we can use uh, an example that we already had here so for example this run parser char x uh so our parser here is this part char x right run parser is the function from from that parser and the XYZ is the string input. So if we want to create a new parser out of this char X by mapping a function over it, we can map a function over it. We could write a, a lambda function or, or let's just say, let's map the two upper function over char x uh, so we'll need to import it as well to upper so it uh, the function transforms the char into we have to reload uh, into the uppercase letter okay so just using the parser char x on input xyz gives us back just x lowercase yz lowercase and if we map a function to upper, then we apply this to upper function to the parsed value of x, and our parsed value is returned as uh, an uppercase x now. Uh, if we have a uppercase x in the input now, we get uh, nothing still, right? Because char is, is a parser that expects exactly x exactly lowercase x here so uh, the result of the first parser is nothing and therefore there is nothing to map the upper, to upper function on so we just propagate uh, the nothing so that's uh, that's an example of how f mapping works here and now if we look at our definition it's uh, it's kind of uh, long and we have a double net uh, a double where statement right a nested where so in Haskell usually things can be written very very concise and if we think about it what we are really doing in 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 this function is just mapping this first f f mapping as in the maybe type f mapping this first f to the result so actually we can write this in a in a in one line 
and save us the whole wares and stuff. And that would be really more Haskellish code. So I'm gonna comment to the this first one out. And let's do another one. Instant function parser where uh, we have f map again a to b parser a to parser b okay and f map uh, we can leave the arguments as this so f map f and a parser rp what do we want to give back again we know it's it's a parser right so the question is what the parser function is and so um like we said what we want to do is first uh, apply our rp function right and then uh sort of uh apply the the other function to the result of that function so that's uh, that should uh, sort of remind you of function composition this is exactly what function composition is right we have uh, we apply a function and we apply another function to the result of the first function application so we can use the dot operator and we know we want to apply rp first so uh, the dot goes behind rp and then this the second function we want to apply well let's think about the result of rp first rp run parser the result is going to be a maybe a string right so we know this is a maybe type and really what we want to do again like last time we want to apply the first f function to it that's what we that's what we want our second function to be this function that we are mapping over apply to the first element of the run parser result but again rp returns a maybe type so the function we are composing here has to work on maybe types and this one uh, does not right first f just works on on uh, normal tuples so all we need to do is again take advantage of the fact that maybe is a functor and has its own fmap implementation and then we simply map uh, the first function to the result of rp we compose those two functions together and that's exactly what we have defined here but it's in one line so basically all we care about is uh, this right f map the first function to the result except here uh, in the above definition we explicitly got the result through a where clause but here we we don't care about it we just say okay mapping an f function over an existing parser is going to be a parser where the the function it runs is the result of the first function composed with mapping this first f uh to to, to and applying it to its result right so you see it's very simple but this uh i think if i showed you this first you would it's it's kind of hard to read right because it's so succinct and there's like so many things happening and there's a there's an f map and there's an f map in the function definition so you know you you can start thinking about recursion already but there is no recursion here because this f map on the right is applied to the maybe type while the f map we are defining is applied for the parser type so it is very short and very nice but it in my opinion it is hard to read like this is much uh, easier to read uh, when doing it first and then this is sort of like nicer haskell way of doing it but okay that's uh, okay we can we can check that it still works right so if we map to upper uh, this is the case where we have an uppercase in the input, so nothing is parsed, it fails. And if it succeeds, then our two upper function is properly mapped over the existing parser. Okay, so that's the first exercise done, and let's move to the next one. The second exercise asks us to implement an applicative instance for parser now. Um, and in the applicative instance, we need two functions, pure 
and the applicative function application the less than star greater than operator so for parser pure is going to represent the parser which consumes no input and successfully returns a result of a in other words given a, a value of type a the parser should whatever input it gets should just return successfully just a and whatever input it got shouldn't consume any input just successfully return the result basically wrapping uh, a value a into the parser type and uh, parser one applied to parser two in the applicative way should be represents the parser which first runs parser one which will consume some input and produce a function then passes the remaining input to parser two which consumes more input and produces some value and then finally returns the result of applying the function function being the one from the first parser to the value from the second parser and uh, if if anything fails along the way either parser one fails or parser two fails the whole thing should fail right so the application should only succeed if if both parsers succeed okay so let's uh let's start with instance up Applica applic applicative applicative parser where so we know we need two functions pure pure is a function of type signature uh, type a and returns a parser a and like we said all we need pure to do is take some value we can say x and return a parser uh, that for its parser run parser function we can define it as a lambda function here takes in one argument xs representing the string and always just returns just a uh, just x xs right so whatever xs is we don't really care about it we're just going to return it as it is in the remainder and we are always going to return x from from this uh, parser that we created with pure basically like i said just wrapping x into the parser type and the other function is the less than star greater than operator so we know that like fmap uh, it takes in a function a to b but with applicatives the a to b function is wrapped in the parser type and it takes a parser of a and then returns a parser of b uh, once they are applied to each other so uh, like we saw here we have p1 applied to p2 we can write it a bit differently we can use uh, pattern matching on the on the parsers uh, like we did with functors so we have parser run parser one rp1 is going to be the function the run parser function of the first one and then we have the um, operator and the other person other parser is going to be rp2 its function is going to be rp2 and again we know we need to return a parser uh, that has some function that's the result of the applicative function application here so we'll call this function uh, we can call it f since we don't have f defined and we need to define f right so f is again a function uh it's a parser a run parser function so we know it it operates on a string we we'll just call it xs and we can take our approach from from last time with functors where we uh do calculate the results and so on and then see what we want to do so we know that run parser one is going to give us a function a to b in the uh, as its parsed value right so we, we want to run that first so i'll, I'll put another uh, nested where here and uh, we can say result one uh, being the result of the run parser uh, rp1 function so we apply rp1 to xs and we get some result 
uh, right now we don't know what it is but this result one um, uh, it uh, basically run parser two depends on the result uh, one right because okay let's say what is the result of run parser two then we have to think about what are we even applying run parser two on uh so if res1 fails if it's nothing then res2 should also be nothing right if something fails everything fails but if res1 is a uh, just something then we want to apply the run parser2 on the remaining string uh, the remaining input uh, of the run parser uh, uh, result uh, run parser1 result result1 so we can use the case of ex expression here. So case res1 of, and then we can uh, pattern match uh, as in uh, if it's, uh, if case res1 is nothing, then this will also be nothing, right? Result two will also be nothing. Uh, uh, if it's a uh, just, um, just x, x, s, then what we want to do or we don't really need this x do we uh, let, let's see uh, then for the result two what we want to do is apply the run parser two on this xs but since we have xs here let's say this is the uh, string reminder so we want to apply the run parser 2 on the reminder of the input after parser 1 has uh, has run right now we have uh, the result of the first parser we have the result of the second parser which depends on the first parser and uh, i think with that we can finally define our uh, fxs f being the new parser function applied to some string xs so uh, again uh, this function we can use is nothing right if result one is nothing then this is nothing as well same goes for result two if result two is nothing then this is also nothing Okay, the, the, the other case is where we have some just values for both of these. Both of the, the run parsers succeeded. And now what do we want our new parser to, to represent? What do we want its function to do? So basically, what we, what we want to do, the first one will give us a function. The second one will give us a value. We want to apply the function to the value. Okay, so what we need is um, to apply the function of uh, res1 Yeah, so we just need uh, Okay, so res2 res is our uh, value right well it contains our value and uh, red one is our function we would like to uh, sort of deconstruct these uh, at least res, uh, res one right uh, because these are both maybe types so I think the best way to access the values might be using the case of expression again here and we say case res1 of um, so of uh, nothing is nothing okay and just and so res1 is our function and the reminder of the string we don't really care about here because uh, if we extract this function here then that's what we want to apply to res2 and uh, res2 again is a maybe type as we know right it's a maybe type so we just want to apply again 
the the same way we did before first if we want to apply to the maybe type because it's a maybe type we have to f map it over and uh i think this this works now uh, surely there is uh, surely there is a way to make this more haskellish i'll leave it to you uh but uh, this should be a valid uh, instance for the applicative type class for the parser type for this second exercise there is actually a continuation that says so what is this good for and um so from from their university class they had some type examples uh for the employee type where type name is a string data employee data constructor emp has a name and phone uh so it says we could use the applicative instance for parser to make an employee parser now from name and phone parsers that is we have uh two parsers parse name and parse phone and then our full employee parser would be uh, emp data constructor fmap this is the infix operator for fmap so emp as a function mapped over the uh, parse name uh, applied to parse phone in the applicative style and uh, the whole expression is a parser uh, for the employee type so it is a parser which first reads a name from the input then a phone number and returns them combined into an employee record of course this assumes that the name and phone number are right next to each other uh, next to each other in the input with no intervening separators we'll see later how to make parsers that can throw away extra stuff okay so so let's do this with our implementation and in a way we'll check that our applicative uh, definition works as it should so we'll copy these types over data type name and data employee employee is not a visible associated type class of applicative um oh is it because it's on the same line yeah okay <clears throat> then we have uh, we need these functions parse name and parse phone we need to define them and then we can use this as the employee parser we'll do that last okay so parse name so we are expecting input that's going to have a name and then a phone number immediately after it so it's it's a string of the type you know uh, ABC one two three yeah so parse name uh, is a parser of type name which is just a string and so this function should return a parser uh, parse name yeah so what we need to do is read all the input until we get to a digit okay uh let's say parser g or parser f where f applied to an empty string is nothing and f applied to xs is going to be so we need to everything until uh until the first digit so we can use is digit to check if uh, if the character is uh, is a digit oh yeah there's a good function break um, in Haskell which uh, breaks a list given a predicate right so uh, we can break is digit xs uh but uh, actually what we want to do uh, yeah this is what we want but how do we write it so this would give us like if we have a string a b c one two three this would give us uh a tuple 
broke uh, this string broke into a tuple where the first one is abc and the second one is one two three right as soon as we hit the is digit and it returns true we break the the string everything before that is returned and everything after that is returned in the second element so this is uh this is what we get yeah so i mean we can just wrap the just constructor over that i guess that works i think so let let's try parse name parse name okay if i reload it works okay parse name uh, parse name so run parser parse name and let's give it input abc one two three nice okay it does work okay that's good now parse phone for parse phone we can even have uh, more assumptions right since we are assuming that uh, the phone number follows the um the name right after it then parser phone can be a very simple parser that uh, takes in some string xs but at this point we know that xs is or should be just the phone number right because the remain what's what remains is just the phone number after after we parse the name from it so we can just uh we can just return uh xs and the remainder is is nothing we just uh whatever input we get we parse all of it into the first element of the tuple and uh, we say nothing is left this is, uh, assumes a lot about the input but for for our case it should work okay and what's uh, what's left then is to uh, define something like parse emp and that's going to be a parser employee and this is basically written for us here but uh, let's go through it so uh, this is fmap right as we know it's the infix operator for uh, fmap so we are uh, using the emp data constructor which is a function that takes two arguments name and, and, and phone and we map it over this result of uh, parse name applied to parse phone so um, right the way this works is uh, this is applied first emp is a function that takes two arguments right we map it over parse name and that means that this these two together will return exactly what we need for our uh, applicative uh, declaration of this operator it will return a parser from a to b why because emp takes two arguments we have one argument from parse name so the result of the f mapped function right because th this is a functor so our uh, we will run the first function uh rp or or the parse name first we'll get a result and we'll try to apply emp to it but we are missing one argument so what will happen is that we'll get a curried function back and this two together will be a parser of type uh, a to b and then we apply in applicative style the parse phone to it and then we know uh that uh, we will will get some value from the second one apply the function from the first one 
to, to that value and that completes the EMP uh, data constructor and we get uh, an employee back. And I think we need a deriving show here since uh, we're going to try to show it. Okay, let's try it. Reload. So maybe we can try uh, parse phone first. Run parser for parse phone and give it some input one two three right because we are expecting a phone number uh, only a phone number for parse phone because parse name is going to parse the first part of the input okay uh, also then we can try the employee so parse emp and uh, we can say uh, some name maybe john and the phone number some some numbers and let's see what do we get we get a just employee so so our parser works right it returns an employee with the name john and the phone number 945473 the rest of the input uh, nothing is left of course our implementation has a problem because but if we have some a b c d that's gonna end up in the phone number if it's at the end but uh, of course we are um as we said making a lot of assumptions about the input and anyway this is to show how uh applicative style of using parsers or applicative style in general works so that's it for exercise two now and the last one is exercise three below the third exercise says that we can also test our applicative instances using other simple applications of functions to multiple parsers so you should implement each of the following exercises using the applicative interface to put together simple parsers into more complex ones so much like we did with parse name and parse phone to create a, uh, an employee parser a more complex one we have to do the same here uh, so we do not implement them using the low level definition of a parser in other words pretend that you don't have the access that you uh, do not have the access to the parser constructor or even know how the parser type is defined so the first one is create a parser ab parser which is a parser of type char char which expects to see characters a and b and returns them as a pair that is here is some example run parser a b c d e f will return a tuple of a b so the first two elements are a b and those are parsed and if we run a e then we get nothing right because the second element is not b okay <clears throat> let's do let's do that one first so a b parser is a parser of type char char and so of course what we could do is uh, say hey, this is a parser that uh, function takes some input checks if it's a and b but we are not allowed to use this parser data constructor we have to use some um some simple parser like like this char one right that we takes a char is sort of perfect for this task uh takes a char and returns a parser char and we need to create our new parsers from the simple ones so we'll use this char uh, function that creates a parser for us to to define this uh, parser for for exercise for this exercise a b parser um so we know that the characters are a and b okay so basically we'll want something like uh, char a and also we'll want char b right these are our two parsers that we need to combine so it seems pretty similar to this employee parser where we have two parsers to combine them okay we apply the applicative style okay and then the thing is 
in the employee example, we needed the result to be in the EMP data constructor, the employee type. So we mapped uh, its data constructor <clears throat> to the first parser to get a function. Now, what we need is not an employee, but we need a tuple. And a tuple is actually even more simple, right? Um, tuples are constructed like uh, brackets and then some element a, b separated by commas. But the tuple constructor uh, exists as well, which is just the type of uh, this comma operator. So we can check the type. You see, this is a valid function in Haskell. It takes two elements and constructs a tuple. So basically, this is all we need, right? We need to uh, map this function over um, over the these two parsers to construct the tuples. Right, because this uh, first one is going to get applied, it's going to take the A, the second one is going to take the B, all we need is the combining function to combine them. And here we need the uh, brackets because once we start using fmap, Haskell doesn't know what to apply, so we need to explicitly say char A is going to be together so that this equals a parser, and then we fmap a function over a parser and we get back again like with the employee example we get back a current function right because the this tuple constructor takes two arguments we apply only one and then uh, <clears throat> uh, we apply the second one in the uh, once we use the applicative style for char b so this should be fine if we see run parser a b Okay, this works, and AE also returns nothing as it should because the second element is an E instead of a B. Okay, so that's uh, AB parser, a pretty simple one, created from combining two uh, parsers, char A and char B, and mapping the tuple constructor over them. The second one is create a parser, ab parser underscore, which is of type parser unit. Uh, so it acts in the same way as ab parser, but returns unit instead of the characters a and b. Uh, so, uh -huh. run parser, ab parser, abc. So if it's successful, it will return unit. If it's not successful, it will return nothing. Okay, AB parser. So since it acts the same way as AB parser, we are pretty sure that we can just use AB parser here. And uh, basically, AB parser gives us a result. The result is uh, this tuple. All we want to do is replace this result tuple with just a unit. So what we want to do is um, fmap a function over ab parser that's going to take the result and then turn it into into a unit, right? So we can use fmap, and now yeah, how do we map a unit over this? Well, there is a function in Haskell that's uh, pretty useful for this kind of thing. It's called const, and you can check the type. Type of const is um, a function that accepts two arguments, a and b, and uh, returns a. So uh, this function always returns the first argument regardless of the input. So if we say the first argument is a unit, uh, why not use void? But okay, this is from monad. We don't know about monads yet. Um, so yeah, this this should be fine. So we map this const function and give it the first argument unit. So whatever it is applied to, which will be the uh, first element of the tuple result of ab parser, 
uh, it will just evaluate to to unit, right? So if we reload this and we run parser ab parser underscore, we still get nothing for the input ae. But if we say abc, then it works as it should. It's just that it returns unit because the const function is mapped over it, right? So we take advantage of the already defined AB parser and we simply map some function over it that turns everything into a unit. Okay, that's uh, the end of the applicative practical session. Uh, we, we looked at uh, applicatives, maybe it was uh, a bit uh maybe it was a lot this session but uh, i think it was good practice so again we looked at applicative functors the pure function and the applicative function application the less than star greater than operator we implemented the functor instance for this parser type we implemented the applicative instance for the parser type and we we even used our applicative instance to create more complex parsers out of simpler ones so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye